Here you go. Here you go. I'm distracted. I'm getting really close to that one. Yeah, I thought we would just kind of leave it the way it was. Yeah. Well, then maybe. I can't call it Budget and Finance Committee to order. Mark, why don't you go ahead? Oh, thank you. Um, uh, about preparing a memo outlining um, the village's lead lateral replacement program and attached uh, a few timeline documents for, for reference. Um, you know, traditionally, there's really not been much uh, traction as far as community participation in this program. Um, so I've never had to take a, a closer look at this. Um, however, um, this year again it was kind of slotted in with the water main project. Just yeah, we're going to still do it, and we have 14 out of 27 people say okay. What what, what do we communicate differently? I mean, because we have like zero one. No, <laughs> what, 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 what are happened? the? Is it just the in, like the? nationwide interests on lead infrastructure. I, I think that probably is the overwhelming factor. I mean, mm -hmm. the Public Works Department's always done, a, I think, a pretty effective job of letting people know the program's available, but yep. um, people are in tune with that issue yep. nowadays. And uh, so, so the NAN uh, told me of their success, and I said, well, how are we going to pay for that? <laughs> um, it's never, just never been an issue before. I mean, one person you know, we can handle, but 14 is about a $100,000 funding need. Um, uh, staff's recommendation is uh, similar to the neighborhood loan program. Uh, we would commit $100,000 of general fund unassigned reserve balances to that effort um, to institute this year's program. And, uh, and be able to pay the contractor and then support the, the loans for the next five years. Um, uh, and then moving forward, we would have to take another evaluation. Obviously, this is not something we can sustain in the long run. Um, and loans are five, uh, five years, 3%, is that? Five years, 0%, I believe. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought it right, I thought it was three, but I think it was zero. Two, I thought it was three. Yeah, I was three. But I thought okay. it was, I yeah, thought we... Well, I'll, re I'll review that documentation. I have the, the source paperwork. I I think we changed it, well, I think it was changed in 2017 to 3%. Okay. Yeah. It started out at zero and now it's three. Okay. And of course, you know, at some point in time, if somebody were to become past due, there's past due that was built into that as well, just as a standard. Uh, so, um, I think that's sorry. Can I ask a question about you that? May. So, let's say in 2020, um, we have another 14 people that want to participate, or 20 people that want to participate in the program, and they want to use the funding through the village. What what do we do, or is that what we are trying to figure out? Is what happens going forward? I mean, it, or is it tonight? We're just discussing funding for this year. Well, tonight I'm asking for a, um, a short-term solution mm -hmm. to the unexpected participation this sure. year. Sure. And I think that uh, uh, sometime over the summer or going into next fall, it will bring to the board some suggestions for possible okay. long-term funding solutions what for that. What is our fund balance, like 4.3? I mean, we have 4.3 um, million that's just sitting there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're loaning it, but people are going to pay it back. Right. So, I mean, it's not like we're really, it's yeah. not like it's really. Yeah, our unassigned fund balance, I think, is still a little over a million at this point. But if you, just from recollection, I think it was $264,000 last year was used to stabilize debt service at 5%. And I would anticipate, just off the top of my head, that that number is going to be approximately the same this year. So, um, uh, but there are sufficient funds available. I am not. Um, Concerned about that, but I did want to make note in my fiscal note that, that is um, one of the drawbacks of using this for additional purposes. Is that it? Well, we also have had it assigned for na the neighborhood loan program that we're not doing anymore. What about the money assigned for that? Can we just change that over? We can look at releasing that mm -hmm. 
at some point, right? Not to mention which the business loans we've made that are now going to the CDA instead of coming back. To That's correct. And also, can we? Um, I think Jessica's probably right in terms of it's just more awareness of this issue, you know, nationally and locally. But can we look and just? I just I'm curious as to whether this is the new standard or whether we're going to go back to one or two. Just make sure we didn't do anything different this year. It just it's just it's a fourteen hundred percent increase. It's just really right. I mean, and I even so I had like just anecdotally in my experience. I had we had ours done at our house like like two years ago. Um, the thought I mean, and I knew about the program. I'm like I don't need mine, but had had it been now, and everything that you know Flint hadn't happened then, and you know I would like oh yeah. For sure, let's do let's yeah. do mine. I have two small kids, you know, so I do think just that that crisis and and knowing that you know our, our community's infrastructure is old, like Flint's, that people are like, this is my chance to get this done, like at, you know, very low cost to me. Why would I? Why would I not do it? You know, this is well. The time. I, I think at some point in time here, the the in my personal opinion, uh, the metric is when you go to sell your house. Do you have a lead lateral or do you not have a lead lateral? And that, again, I think might motivate motivate people to say, hey, you know, this is going to be an issue moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I think over time that is going to become more and more significant because I would expect at some point that might be a point of negotiation just if you had a, a foundation wall that needed repair. You know, oh my gosh, no, I'm not going to buy this. I have to do a, replace my mm -hmm. lead lateral. So uh, that's just my personal uh, the, the sense of how that's going to go over the, the next 10 years. Be coming up with either coming up with money or allowing us uh, for the water utility to fund it. So, I mean, well, to fund it will separately or to, fund to put it in the water rates to oh, to get to pay yeah. okay. for the, the state does yeah. accommodate that now, but it has to be a qualified program and it has to be uh, approved by the PSC. So, that'll be one of the things I suspect will come before. Uh, the committee uh, be 40 years out. You know, what are the options? What do we, what do we think about move, moving forward? Uh, obviously, we're going to be doing a lot of work in the southeast in the next 10 years. Um, I haven't done any counts of how many properties will be affected with the water mains in the, those areas, but it's going to be a significant amount. So I think we should be uh, in a much better place to make sure that we've got our funding handled at the time the program's adopted. Yeah. I mean, I'm com I guess, trying to glue it all together, I think I'm comfortable with committing 100000 to the general fund for this year, but next year I kind of would like to look for, I'd like to just get kind of outline different solutions, mm -hmm. and also like some information on whether there's anything else going on besides, you know, and I think, I think you're probably right, but just, just, just taking a look at, hey, did we communicate differently? Did we do something to drive these numbers? I doubt it, but. Sure. Well, I mean, I think it's good that people are doing well, that. So, so sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I wish I would love if we paid for it. You know. But. Yeah. Just to be clear, I'm, I'm glad people are doing it. I'm yeah. just kind of curious as to whether one or fourteen is the. Yeah. yeah. I think what block is forty? Is it uh, the olive block of Woodburn, like between olive and? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever. Okay. Yeah, because I'm 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 forty two one, and I'm between the olive and Marriott. Yeah. Marriott. Okay. And then forty three. Property owners cost to pay for a five-year assessment at three percent, but I think we do need to check the minutes because I think we changed that to zero. That's so it would be five years and yeah. zero. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I will certainly verify that. Uh, hopefully, the committee will support 
the recommendation then to uh, commit the unassigned fund balances for this program in 2019, and we'll get that to the board later this evening. What do we have to do technically, because that wasn't in the budget, but that was assigned? Okay. Well, again, as you mentioned, it is its own, so it's not a true expenditure per se. Right. Um, obviously, we'll spend months, but then we've, we've got a, a receivable. Right. So uh, I, I don't yeah, think that that, uh, that would not have been a, a budgetary issue other than it would have been a note to the budget because it's below the bottom line, as I, I sometimes might say. Mm -hmm. In the, uh, and there's a whole list of things that the board has assigned or committed. And I wish I had a budget book. Do we um, do, do we still have an assignment for the neighborhood loan program? We do. 575000 is assigned for that program right now. But I only believe oh, about yeah. half of that is outstanding. Oh, half of that is coming back. Mm -hmm. Coming back over due course, yeah. I, I, but there's I, no new, there's nothing new going on. That's for, the, there's, there's, that's for the attic changes and the duplex conversion. Yeah. But we're, so but that's we're suspended. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, I expect that to come back to the board this summer as well. So I'd um, like to handle that issue, if I might suggest, uh, at that time. So, about what so we may, so yeah, so we can assign another part of the fund balance, but we may get rid of this, you know, we yep. may get rid of yep. this assignment so it would come back, yeah. Yes. Okay. So we're taking, we would sub out. Sure. Okay. Yes, that's certainly a, a reasonable possibility. I mean, I'm in favor of using the fund balance this way instead of just sitting there. I mean, I mean people paid the taxes and it's sitting in an account. And it's. It, I know it makes um, the um, rating agencies happy, but it's tax dollars that people have paid that are not being used for um, actual public services. So I'm in favor of um, making that money work for the residents and taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Okay, so we're all um, I just have one, one other question is, um, what if someone defaults on their loan? What happens? Well, um, you know, this program is set up, it's a very interesting dynamic because it is not uh, an improvement to a public asset or public right of way that benefits a property owner. It's an improvement to a private mm -hmm. side, so it's, it's really an unsecured loan. Mm -hmm. um, now, the document says that we're going to issue invoices for the loans, and that, at that point, it's a municipal invoice. If they don't pay, it's subject to being pushed onto the tax bill. Okay. So, what if somebody moves? Like, if they say and then they move well, to the middle, does it go to the new owner? Uh, no. Not that I, not, okay. not the best that we can determine based on some very preliminary discussions I've had with the city attorney. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, all good questions, all things that came right to the top of my mind when they said you have 14 people. Um, because that, of course, magnifies the potential that people are just going to naturally move. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we want to try to we want to try to get something on record so that in the event of a, a, a transaction, property transaction, that their inquiry uh, with the realtor's inquiry for, for closing will we'll at least identify that. And then uh, our our general hopes would be that most people will want to settle that out at closing. So we have, so is it going to be recorded against the property? That's the, the direction we're thinking right now. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it'll all come up when they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Again, a little further enhancement from just a conceptual. Okay. Um, what do they call that when they check out title? When they oh, check yeah. do your title report? Yeah. yeah. It'll come up in the title report. Okay. Okay. Um, let's move to. If we're all good, no more questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've just move Thank to you. adjourn. So, um, do we need to move to? Yeah, let's I'll adjourn. adjourn. Okay, so I'll move to adjourn. Okay, so I'll move to adjourn. Okay, I'd like to call the um, JPN committee to order at 6.47. Um, so, do you, Sarah, do you want to talk about the um, application from? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, hi. She's here. <laughs> um, so tonight we have before us to consider an application for a Class A uh, for Spring East doing business as uh, BP Pantry 41 at 1604 East Capitol. 
Um, typically in our policy uh, for liquor license insurance does not allow um, alcohol to be sold at a gas station. Um, so this would be um, to kind of look at, to review the policy and say that um, we would kind of go, you know, be changing that and allow this um, application to go before the village board. Any questions on what was included in the packet? I thought if something was at a committee, it didn't really matter. It's always, I mean, we're not deciding. That it Correct. The board. It would be more be that your committee, did, you know, Our was the vote. Correct. Yeah, okay. sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I just would have a bunch of questions on like existing policy. You know, mm -hmm. what's the background? Why is it in place? What's the history? Um, you know, all those types of things. Like, I, I just having not been here when we yeah. put it in place, I just don't know. What so, and I, the tough part is I don't have a lot of history on that either because it was in place before I came here. So, whatever um, transpired from that, I'm not exactly sure. I don't know if you want to do anything. I, I think this has been. Policy for, for a long time. Quite, quite a few years, many years. I guess I'm just looking for the why mm -hmm. behind the policy. I just, you know, I understand what the policy is, and this would be an exception. But, um, you know, before. This, well, this be Pete. This is the one across the street from the high school, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think part of it is like avail availability of liquor and proximity to just schools and younger people. Mm -hmm. and, um, I mean, there is one. I mean, so Walgreens sells yeah. mm -hmm. hard and. Yes, they and do. Then me and then Correct. Metro does. Correct. Kensington Liquor stores. Correct. Do we have anybody else who's, who we could go in and buy? Uh, As used to say, Russian food and gifts. Russian food and gifts. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just getting that stuff on. There's different. Is there a limit? Thief? Thief is a little different because there's um, tasting there, so it's, okay. it's more Pop. of a regular license. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. I think it's just the number, I mean, I don't know because I wasn't around when it's done, but it's just the number of places where you would go and buy liquor, buy alcohol. I mean, is there, I guess, is there any way to kind of get any, I mean, I understand that, but just, I'm just looking for, it's hard for me to make a recommendation yeah. one way or another with just kind of a, well, we have the policy and, I mean, just, I feel like, I feel like I'm missing parts of the story, but. Yeah. Um, I am definitely not the person to answer. Like, I have no idea. I didn't even know there was a policy until we had an application. Possible trustee marker might have a recollection yeah. of that once it gets to the board. But yeah. It may have been predated. <laughs> yeah, right. Even trustee marker. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
my gut intuition is concerning just with all the schools that are right there. I mean, yeah. and, and as a high school student walking out, seeing that right there, and then having all of these other options and places where maybe you can't, maybe you don't get it here, but you're going to go somewhere else, and maybe, you know, one out of five, you're going to get lucky, and right. um, that's like as a mom, that's my my gut initial reaction is there's a lot of places to buy alcohol in Shorewood. Um, so that's my my initial like concern, I guess. I mean, I guess I, I don't have a given what we have in front of us. I don't have an extremely strong reaction one way or another. I, I think that I I, I guess. You know, it feels to me like, I mean, does this just go up to the full board? It could. I mean, and that could be, you know, the, 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 what the recommendation is of the committee. Um, and like Trustee Menta said, you know, Trustee Maha may have more background mm -hmm. on it. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, because it, kind of, it kind of sounds like yeah. you've considered this in the past, when you said no in the past. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. history behind this. I feel like I'm... I feel like I don't have all the information in yeah. front of me, but I mean that might be something where when it goes up to the board, yeah. we get all the information we have kind of the full full and open. What I'm curious about the the class A fermented, is that the one do we have a limit on those or no? We do, which is interesting. So most municipalities don't have a limit on those class A's. Um, but we do have a limit on them. I want I it's, it's six or eight, I can't remember off the top of my head. And we are have four out. Correct. Because that's the other thing, you know, because the pantry came a couple of years ago, I mean, we're going to have the same problem we have with the, mm -hmm. the other liquor licenses that, you know, why did they get it and I did Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's another important piece. Like, what, what, where are we in terms of how many licenses do we have available? Mm -hmm. um, any kind of history we can provide on this? Um, you know, anything, any kind of, any, anything, we've, if we consider this type of thing in the past, you know, what are our past decisions on this? And again, I just think that, we need a complete picture in order to make the best decision that sure. we can. I would guess this is something that's going up to the board. It's, it is. It's published it is. in the paper to yeah. go for May 6th. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I have to say, I mean, I know it would be you know, more money for you, but I, I, I'm concerned about um, the amount of alcohol, and I, I don't want sure to become like, Water Street, and we're, you know, we, I think we need to retain our family, being a, a place where families are attracted and come to, um, and yeah, that's just kind of where I'm coming from on it, but. I don't know if I can talk, sure. <laughs> I don't know if it's like the thing where you're doing it then. Um, so here, is it all right if I put my perspective? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so, um, like, as you know, a lot of other places offer it. Um, and actually City of Pewaukee and City of Waukesha just changed this code because it's so old. Um, I think what's going on with Shorewood is that, so for example, I went and applied and um, they're sort of like, sure, we'll get you all set up, you know, over here. And then um, I got, they're like, oh, we hit a snag, which is this code. So I said, I'm gonna look into it and find out because there's someone who is newer. And then they explained to me, that, yeah, there's this old code that can't allow this at gas stations. They didn't know why. And just like you all are like, why? Um, and I feel like we're trying to create a reason why. Like, you know, we're trying to get into their heads and create like another reason why, instead of um, getting really at the original reason why in the code, you know, when they made it. So I think there's two different things. And then also just having the limit on those, I think that prevents something that you're scared of. And then the other thing, I mean, from my side would be I've gone into grocery stores and not gotten carded, but every gas station I've ever been, I've always been carded and even been denied. I'm like, I went here, <laughs> like, because if you're, you know, if a certain age, you don't have to, you know, show. But I think that's one reason I think gas stations, like, we have this bad image of gas stations or convenience stores. But in reality, like, if you look at the numbers, like, same thing, tobacco. We're right across the street from a high school. We've never sold to underage because trust me, they try and it's annoying for us. It's a waste of our time. But in, you know, we talk about money, but to us, the community is more important. And same thing with the family vibe, like the people who are coming in to ask are people going to barbecues, you know? So for me, it's not just something that's gonna harm the community. Um, and also like for the statistics, I think that those statistics apply to neighborhoods 
who have a different culture than the village of Shorewood. So that's just kind of my point of view on, you know, fear for, you know, bad things happening, like when we're allowing um, the sale of alcohol. Um, then another thing, um, I also would be willing to apply for beer and wine instead of the liquor. When I was talking to it at the village, they're kind of saying, well, it's better to do more, you know, it's more expensive. Um, you pay more for it each year. But um, if you're worried about, you know, liquor being a problem, um, I think, you know, if you feel like beer and wine is a more family friendly thing, as, you know, a lot of different, um, I mean, everyone brings, you know, a six pack to a barbecue or, you know, has di uh, dinners with wine <laughs> or it cooks with wine, like I cook with wine. <laughs> So for me, it's like very convenient. Instead of having to go find parking, go all the way into the store, and then come out just for a bottle of wine, it's like not. Uh, for example, at the station, we sell everything that they could need. We sell um, uh, like all the different kind of pharmacy things and all that, and to like not have this just seems um, kind of old, like kind of like an old code that shouldn't be there anymore. Just like Waukesha and Pewaukee has both, you know, they don't no longer enforce that anymore. Because it's like our time, our, I feel like our, um, our culture has changed such that we're always busy and, you know, we need to go fast. Like, more and more of those lines at the grocery store are being, you know, <laughs> it's hard to find one. I went to Pick and Save and there's only, they only have the automatic ones open and there's like a huge line. And like, that's the one thing we offer the most out of anything for is convenience. Like, we're practically a drive through for people who need the quick thing. And um, I just think that's something we owe to the community. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's going to scatter. And Sarah, if they bump down to just the wine and beer license, we're not similar to the right? yeah. Well, it would be the same. So you can't sell just wine. There's no like wine license. Okay. It would still be a liquor okay. license. Okay. And they would say, they could choose not to sell hard alcohol. Okay. would be their choice, where they could just sell beer and wine, um, but it would still require a full class A. Yeah. Um, did, you, did you know that um, we, in uh, items for future agenda, that there's an item that has to do with your store that we're discussing later tonight about um, jewels and they bring them? No, I did not actually. I had one parent come in and said, it, said she's gonna send me a letter, but I've never got anything. No email. Well, um, so yeah, uh, Mr. Rod DePew contacted us and mm -hmm. said he, you're the BP Pantry yeah. 41. Um, no, he, and he noticed a new electric sign in the window for Jewel Vape Pods. He called and asked how long we've been selling this product. Um, when I asked more questions, they hung up on me. I then contacted Mr. Kenny, principal of high school, to ask if vaping was a problem at his school, which he acknowledged it was. So teenagers can can buy the vaping thing, right? Because it's not necessarily no, tobacco. No, they cannot. Oh, they cannot. No, oh, we, if they even, um, we have to, sh we have a whole um, thing that they started cracking down. So we get really in very really big trouble, so we don't. Um, we have like this whole, um, like it's up, uh, it's, and also we have an email, but he didn't send me an email um, posted on the, right by the window, mm -hmm. so that they can, anybody who has complaints can email, and I haven't gotten anything in that email. Yeah, I thought it would be with us, and we're gonna <laughs> talk about, uh, just as an item for a future agenda, mm -hmm. about regulating that. I mean, I think, and I think his concern was the same, I think, right across, I mean, my kid is at middle school, and he talks yeah. about vaping all the time. Yeah, I hear really I bad things. doing it, but he talks uh, about it all But the time. he, yeah, I hope not, because for us, like, we don't care, um, <laughs> we have kids who come in, they'll buy their soda and their chips, and then they'll try, and they're like, please, I won't tell, and I'm like, go. So actually, and actually I was hoping that the woman who came in, she said she was going to send an email, she never sent an email, um, but I was hoping she would so we could start a conversation because even for us, I mean, imagine every day kids, well actually it's, it's stopped because once they see that you just won't, they, they kind of give up, but still, you know, kids will always try and um, I just like would like people to talk to their kids, you know, and say, you know, they're not going to do it, um, they're not going to sell it to you and like, you know, why do you want to do this? <laughs> Go do something fun, like enjoy your youth. I wasn't someone who wanted to smoke when I was a teenager. So <laughs> to me, it doesn't make sense. Like there are other things you can do with your time and money, so. Can I ask the liquor license, isn't there something on the liquor license about location distance from a school? So I know we talked about that in relation to 
the um, I think the atrium across from Atwater. Yep. Um, there is. I cannot quote it off the top of my head of the number of feet that, feet that it has to be. Yep. Um, I can definitely find out though. Mm -hmm. And this one to me just sounds like I'm just trying to write down all the moving parts that we have here. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about changing the policy, maybe making exception to the policy, number of licenses remaining, consistency with past decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure that you know, given you know, some of the concerns that we have around the community or you know, being close to the high school, you know, public input as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So no, is this something where we, I mean, do we put it on the agenda? I mean, do we, do we always make a recommendation or do we put it on the agenda and just say we're going to have a discussion on this? Uh, you can, I, I don't think there's anything that says, we can put it on the agenda, there's no recommendation coming from right. JPL. Okay. I mean, it, it can just simply be as stated as that. There's no recommendation coming out of committee. Is there a recommendation out for it? I know um, President Rebecca, I mean, I forget what the other issue was, but she asked what our recommendation was. Uh, if you know moving it forward to full board so uh, you know i don't think we have to have one but i think having some 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 thoughts or yeah. you know and i mean they can definitely put due to these unanswered questions mm -hmm. there was no recommendation coming yep. out of committees yeah. these will be answered at the full board level so mm -hmm. yeah that's not good yeah, yeah that's that's good. Good. yeah oh and just just to fill you in on i just for future consideration of the vaping that's generally um and tell me if I'm misstating this, but that's generally something we talk, we're talking about whether to put it on a future agenda item. Yeah. So we won't consider anything or take action tonight, but we will be discussing whether to put it on an agenda item for a meeting coming up. What's the question? Whether to regulate the sales of the vaping. Oh, that it shouldn't be allowed at all? I think so. For adults? Good question. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think we had, we got that. I, mean, I don't think it's yeah. all cigarettes. I think that's so bad. I, I don't think the the definition of what that looks like or yeah, I think in, in yeah. relation yeah. to the resident that it reached it's out because and also it's not really fair. He hasn't reached out to the business, mm -hmm. which I'm, I'm really disappointed about. No, it's it's under at this point under future considerations. Right. Kind of, it's undefined. Mm -hmm. The question is, do we want to take a look? Do we want to pull back and take a look? Hey, is there anything we want to do around? creating an ordinance around this. We're not saying... Yeah, you should contact... I know you guys should also be informed of the Jewel, the company, the things that they've done, because their our reps are sending directly to us, like, um, further than the legal... Like, right, the legal age is 18, but further than the legal, um, because they have repercussions from the, you know, the big cigarette companies, because they don't want Jewel around for them. So, you know, they're being... They had to get rid of all those, like, sweet kind of flavors, mango and everything. Um, and then also the, there are higher um, sanctions for business owners. Like I have a whole list that I have like taped up um, on the inside to, to show like my employees, they already are very conscious of it, but it's a reminder and it's something recent they sent to us like two or three months ago. So it's been like even more severe. So I mean, I think um, people should be aware that it's not being taken lightly by the companies and also it's partially um, a competition thing between, you know, um, R.J. Reynolds, for example, who's a large cigarette company, they sell an alternative, Alto and other, Vu's, this other brand, but it's not as popular with kids, especially. Um, so they're, it's kind of also a competition thing of like, oh, I want to sell instead of Jules taking up market because it's a smaller company. But um, yeah, so, but they are um, showing their power. So, and because we haven't really had, for us, we haven't had any problems with kids or parents. The only parent that's ever come in um, was one woman about the sign. Um, it has nothing to do with the sales of, of the vape pen itself. It's more like we don't want the sign because it's like more advertisement. Mm -hmm. So it makes them think about it. And that I'm completely I, I'm open to take that down. But it, as for the regulation of the sales, I think I haven't heard of a single community doing that. And I also think it's not fair to adults who are trying to quit smoking. Well, it says in Nina that they propose an ordinance banning the possession and use of any vaping products by minors throughout the city. Well, no so, minor can have a vaping 
Well, they said state law prohibits minors from possessing consuming tobacco and nicotine, oh. but retailers sell hmm. liquids for vaping that don't contain we nicotine, don't. making it illegal for minors to purchase and use. Yeah, we don't have that. And police can't tell which vaping products. Right. So the, the uh, that police, I understand. But we don't sell that at all because our our market is not kids. We are part of the community as well, you know. And these kids, like, um, we just had an. Um, uh, it was like Fox Six come in because of the car crash. Like these, we see these kids all the time. That they're part of our lives too, and we generally care about them. I know people look at business and sometimes feel like we're, I don't know, heartless or something, or just out for greed. But we're a local business. We're only branded by BP because we decide to go with their program, um, which allows us to do like the fresh perks and everything like that. We're a privately owned, you know, small business, and the kids that we see every day are the kids like. You know, we see how they're doing, and like that, that affects us because that's part of our life. You know, <laughs> we're not like some cold people, and they're every like almost every single day, and seeing these same kids and like they're like they're like kind of like my kid. Like I mean, they're uh, they're good kids. The only people like there are, haven't even been that many who've been really pushing the jewel. Like, and if you guys want a list of those kids, I can give them to you because really. Um, but there haven't been that many. They just a few who have come have been persistent <coughs> and angry and rude. And that's where I'm like, please control your kids. <laughs> please talk to your kids about trying to like sneak a jewel from us because we're not gonna do it. Um, so I understand that, but you should know that we don't sell those products because we get it through our um, our distributor and we only order what they have. And it's a big distributor. It's SAS, and they don't even sell the chip and like. I don't even know where they get those products from because to me it's so immoral in my eyes. So yeah, it'll be so it'll be decided if they're going to put it on the future agenda tonight, which okay. um, yeah. you can check back with the clerk's office. Well, what I'm saying is it's it's something we don't currently do. I know we can't it, like it be, doesn't. There could be yeah. other places in town. That oh, okay, that. Yeah. gotcha. Yeah. So, but the one that the guy sent the email about. It. Yeah, he should have reached out to us. We have it like plastered. It's very really large on <laughs> the right hand of the. Um, so we will move this to full board for May sixth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Meeting starts at seven thirty. I'll just send you a reminder okay. the week before. Okay. Um, with those follow up items and including the packet. Any other questions? Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Um, so we will move on to um, the next item on our agenda, which is considering the request for seasonal extension of the premise from Musette um, to serve drinks outside to waiting customers. So. Hi, Hi, I'm Dan Seidner. Hi. Hi. How's everybody? Good. Oh, Better than you are. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I had, a, I had a knee replacement a few weeks ago, so I am a little laid up here, but I'm starting to get around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my pleasure. Yeah. Um, well, we, I mean, there's been some, there's some information in our packet. I don't know if you guys have any questions right off the bat or if you want to talk through sure. your, kind of plan. So, and so, I just had a question. So would, so someone could come up and get a drink, not, ne not necessarily, and then not necessarily go into the restaurant. Like it, it is conceivable that somebody would do that. We we do this uh, at present at our other Blues Egg location. Now the other Blues Egg location is off the street and it's on private property. Mm -hmm. Here's the, the the impetus behind this is that we you know we're we've been open. It'll be a year in May. Um, our business is uh, I think generally been well received. I'm very. Uh, it took us a while to, to get our team together and, and get consistency with our employees, our product. But I think basically since Thanksgiving, we've been, I've been I'm very proud of, of what we're accomplishing. Um, we're serving high quality food, good service, things are going well. But uh, we are uh, well off of our sales projections, I, not even 50% of what our sales projections were. I know a lot of people see the lines on the weekends and think, wow, it's really busy. The problem structurally for the business is that during the week is where our numbers are, are off. We will do you know, 100 to 150 less covers on a Monday through Friday than we do at our other location. And we built the, the, you know, the infrastructure of the business, the staffing of the business, all of it was done to uh, set ourselves up to be able to handle the volume that we had projected. 
it's on us to build that business during the week. But it is doubly challenging in that on the weekends, we have many people who will arrive and then see a long wait and choose to go, they'll put their name on the list, but they'll leave and go elsewhere to have a drink or do whatever it is they're going to do. What we found at our location in Milwaukee is that if we can provide, and it's not just uh, alcohol, we, would, we also put out monkey bread, sausage rolls, other simple food items that people can buy so that people will just stick around and you know have a snack, have a Bloody Mary, or certainly can be coffee too. We provide coffee to people right there as they walk in. Um, but outside, we, we do, we, at the other location, we provide beer, Bloody Marys, uh, mimosas, and if you want an Irish coffee, we do that as well. And what we found is, is we can create an environment that where people can make themselves comfortable, have a drink, have a snack, they tend to stick around a little bit more. And what we're finding is that as people are leaving to go down the street, camp bar, or wherever it may be, to have, you know, have that drink while they're waiting to come in, we tend to lose them during that time. So while we have these extended waits, so often we'll have, you know, multiple parties that do not show, and therefore we don't ultimately do the business that, that we, we could be doing. In order to do this effectively, we would be using a rollout bar, which I did send over a, just a picture. I mean, it's, it's a, from a website that shows what it is. It's, we roll it out, we set up a cash register, we use effectively a square, it's tied to our point of sale system, but it's a square type product where you're swiping cards for those who want it. We're very clear on the fact that we would need to set up signage. Um, I, We've had a couple of conversations with the folks from the Mosaic about this as to what, how they would feel as to whether or not we would put that sign to the north or to the south of their front doors. Um, and we're still having conversations with them. They're aware that we're applying for this and don't have any obvious objections to it, but we still need to discuss that a little bit further with them. So we need to put signage saying you cannot pass this point uh, with alcohol in your hands, we would have that posted there, and then again uh, on the, the north on the corner of Oakland and Olive, same thing. You cannot go beyond this point with alcohol in your hands. Everything would be done in disposable cups. We would make an additional effort for maintaining the area, making sure it's clean and tidy, and additional uh, you know garbage cans and things out there to make sure that we were keeping the area uh, clean and tidy. You know the the. Challenges is at the same time, you know, we obviously we have a full bar inside, but with all of the people that are dining at the bar, it becomes difficult to try and be able to get a drink. And then also the fact is, is that people want to be able to stand outside and on a nice sunny day and enjoy, enjoy that. And it's absolutely weather dependent. If it's a rainy day, we're not going to roll out the bar because nobody wants to be outside. So if it's a nice day, we're out. If we're not, we roll it back in. Um, so it is a relatively simple extension of premise. I know that a lot of other establishments have seating out on the sidewalk so that obviously people are consuming alcoholic beverages outside. If the board felt that they were uncomfortable with you know, doing this, we could consider. We have chosen not to apply for additional tables outside simply because we don't feel that we can provide the level of service that we would like. We may choose to ask to do that in the future once we've got a point where we feel like we've got the staffing and we've got the kitchen dialed so that we could take on the additional tables and, and ask for some additional outside seating, both on Oakland and on Olive. But we haven't made that move yet. Uh, and we felt like this was a way for us to provide some additional service to our guests and uh, you know that, that it effectively was providing the same service that table service alcohol would be providing. That's the end. That's that's the concept of what we're trying to do. Um, go ahead. Um, I just have a kind of a logistical question. Mm -hmm. So, um, just knowing sort of how that building looks, and then looking at you know the map it, that you that you drew, there's mm -hmm. sort of that like indentation. You know, so in in here that indentation, mm -hmm. that setback, and then you know the, the tables are right on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. So is that the intention that that's where the bar would be placed? Effectively, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So in this 
like in this little, so there, there's, that there's, little setback. Yeah, That's there's, more of my kind of biggest question and or concern. For fire codes, ironically, we had to create them, but we didn't have to use them. So, um, like, we have the, the true front entrance, and then there's an additional entrance there that we do not use. Oh, okay. We would place the bar directly in front of that. And we've already got benches outside. Um, if it uh, seemed like it would be an appropriate thing to do, we would add some additional benches to if, you know, again, so that's the benches are just on Oakland? Or the, at the moment, there's only benches on Oakland, and we don't necessarily intend to put benches on the olive side unless uh, you all felt that that would provide, I mean, the opportunity to make it a more of a Contained. Contained. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, I, yeah. my, my concern is just kind of is, is the containment a little bit. I just mm -hmm. I, I want to make sure that we don't have you know forty people standing all throughout the sidewalk, uh, you know, kind of obstructing foot traffic. Um, it'd be nice if there were kind of benches to funnel people to. Um, That's certainly something we could we could. I mean, it's not that big of a deal for us to create um, benches and then even little side tables. You know, effectively a a side table. Uh, for people to place that there. Based, based on your experience, how, 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 cr this might be a dumb question, how crowded does it get? Are we talking like there will be 10 on a, on a nice on a, summer day? On a nice summer day at uh, uh, our other location, we will do between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars in additional bar sales by having someone out there. That means that approximately over the course of of the, we, we usually roll it out around nine o'clock. The restaurant opens at seven, but there's not enough demand or warrant yeah. to come out until nine, and we go until about one. That means we're serving approximately 40 people an hour during that time. So, you know, it's uh, it's certainly worth our our time to do that. I mean, you add that up over the course of the summer, it's, an, it's a nice bit of business that we, that is truly additional business, not uh, we don't lose business at our main bar by doing so. Um, but, I mean, there may be some points when there are enough bodies out there that someone might have to kind of navigate through. But I certainly don't see this as a situation where people will be unable to pass on the street because there's a bar crowd. So those four days would imagine are making their ways, the ways to the table. And, and Ultimately, you know, the, the goal is, you know, to have a wait that gets down closer to 25 or 30 minutes so it's enough time for someone to be able to enjoy a drink outside and then come inside and, and, and go. I can't really speak to your original question of would, I mean, technically, yes, anyone who walked up and was of age and, and the impetus is on us just as much outside as is inside to make sure that we're serving of age people, um, uh, that yes, someone could walk up and get a drink who wasn't necessarily planning on dining with us. There's no way it was really so we would, would provide service to, to an of-age patron. Could someone get a drink at the bar and then come outside with it in your current liquor license? Uh, under the current liquor license, we are allowed to be outside. Um, I want to say yes to that, but I actually, Sarah, do you have a... It's not recommended. You and I, yeah. You, the, technically, I don't think we are officially allowed at yeah. this moment to do it. That's why we made the yeah. point of asking for the. But, but the ordering from the, you know, especially yeah. since they don't have, if they had outside dining, it would be a different story. But mm -hmm. to just bring it outside would be different. I mean, yeah. A waitress, I guess, could serve it from the bar inside to somebody outside. It would be a little more legitimate than somebody going and ordering their drink and carrying it out the front door. That's where it gets a little Isn't tricky. Isn't that what Ruffus was doing? They were, you could get a drink and go out to the fire pit. You could, but it was a little more contained mm -hmm. in that where it was blocked off. But well, here's my yeah. here's my concern about it is um, I know we haven't been here that long, but especially between Cam and Three Lions, they're like you know, well he got it, I get it, you know, sure. and um, so I'm a little worried that Three Lions is going to be coming and saying. Well, you let him do it, so you gotta let me do it. Um, who else do we have that drunk? I mean, I don't know that um, Cloud Red would. Um, uh, North Star Bistro might. I mean, I, I just we just have to think mm -hmm. forward because if we say yes to Blue Zay, mm -hmm. then we have to 
what reason do we have to say no to anybody else? I mean, I do think for camp and for um, Three Lions, they do have the parklet and that's that true. ability to serve outside of that extension of premise. Um, I do think you're, um, although North Star does that. Right, Cloud that's does that. right. Well, and but Cloud Red does not serve anything on their patio. Like they won't even let you order their food and take it to their patio in the back because they oh, their back. kitchen can't they can't manage it. Like there's like sacks all over the thing that you can't even do that. So but what about the tables in the front though? You can dine out there. And I don't know about that. Right, right, but I mean, right but, I mean they, but I mean Cloud Red might say we want to have bar. I'm just saying. Oh, out. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. Where, what other places in town serve food and alcohol mm -hmm. that would say? Now, that's a good point. They all have. Now, Cloud Road doesn't have the parklet, but they do have outdoor seating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we made a condition like this summer on, you know, we might want to tie it to mm -hmm. the to the outdoor seating of the parklet. I just because I just don't I just don't want to. I mean, I can particularly. I'm on tape. I might get in trouble, but I can particularly see three lions. Mm -hmm. You know, because they. I mean, for them, they have a park. Like it's, I, I for for me, like my, like I mean, we would drive to Tosa to go to Blue's Egg before, mm -hmm. and I think people on the North Shore and in Milwaukee are like, sweet, this is closer. I don't have to drive to Tosa, and yes, it may be a thirty-minute wait. Like, I don't know that somebody's saying, let's go to Three Lions for a thirty-minute wait. You, you know, I just think it's a different. I know, but they're going to say, I, I, you know, yeah, I understand. Be, you have kids, mm -hmm. you know. Like, hey. <laughs> right. And they, they right. do. No. I mean, that was with the, you know, you let camp do the Packers games, so you have to be able to do the soccer thing, and it just, mm -hmm. so I'm just telling yep. you. Yep, no, it's it's gonna, gonna I think that's a fair. We, I think yeah. we need to, you know, to think of those. Mm -hmm. Unless we're okay with having outdoor bars. All up and down the street every weekend in the summer, and I personally am not. But yeah. so, Sarah, is this something that goes up the weekend, take up to the full community? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, it's totally by the DOR's perspective, fine as long as the full board approves it. Um, and you know, it's the Department of Revenue. Sorry. So they manage all the liquor licensing aspects and. Yep. Yeah. Um. So that's their stance on it. You know. It can it can be done. It can be done tastefully. Um, so. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, and I would be happy to spend some additional time creating. I appreciate my dye very much pretty homemade. So I'd be happy to spend some time to give a better depiction of what we intend. I'm more than happy to if if the feeling is that by providing additional seating that that would. Um, um, just you know, create more of an obvious space that it is allowed, um, and of course, I, I my every intent is to do provide additional signage just to make sure that people understand. And, and really, you need it in three locations. You need it on the someone facing south on Oakland, someone facing north on Oakland, and someone facing west on Olive. Mm -hmm. uh, so, again, we're, we'd be happy to do that. Approximately, when would this arrive? Day six. Okay. And, and I, I would kind of like, I mean, yeah. I sort of see where the bar is going to be, but yeah. it'd be nice if I could like, like, visualize, visualize it better. It. Yeah. But, yeah. We can yeah. make that happen. Yeah, even like just on that image with some, you know, knowing that it's mm -hmm. going to be in that, that bump back is helpful sure. for the, the passage. And if you can show photos yeah. of the one that you do in Milwaukee, you know it's on private property, mm -hmm. but it at least give an idea of what sure. the setup is, I would think people would want to see that. I mean, in the, in the Toso? In the Toso. Yeah, it's officially the city of Milwaukee, but oh, is it? yeah, on the south side of Blue Mound, you're in Milwaukee. Oh, okay. Can I ask one other question? Mm -hmm. So the sale would include you would include snacks or food items. It is our intent to do that, yes, which okay. I appreciate might be an additional request on the license. But we'll, what we do is we we come out. I don't know if you've had our sausage rolls. We sell them at the Tosa Farmers mm -hmm. Market and we sell them at Story Hill. But it's it's the same breakfast sausage that we serve in the restaurant, but we put a little honey mustard spread and then wrap them in puff pastry they're extraordinarily they're, they're actually a problem for me uh but we bring those out kind of like a dim sum concept where you mm -hmm. just come out with a tray of them and oh, people just yeah. pay and buy them same thing with monkey bread okay. and then joe's got an idea for another little kind of sweet savory bite thing that he wants to do i, I don't actually know what it is yet but that would be part of the offering okay. 
that we would, and really all we would do in that respect would be have a server come out and circulate, and if people want them, they can buy them right then and there. Uh, Yeah, I like the confining piece. Mm -hmm. yeah. As long as there are other people that take objection with that, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can verify that with planning and development. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that kind of corns it off. And mm -hmm. I mean, I think, you know, ultimately, I, it would be great if you guys had the outdoor seating because, I mean, we, I mean, everyone up and down um, has it. And you kind of have the doors opening anyhow, at least mm -hmm. on the olive side. Mm -hmm. So it would be real easy to just, you know, get a bunch of extra tables out there. So, but I... I mean, I can go back and talk with my partners about that. Um, we, the, the challenge to that is the level of service. You know, we, when guests dine with us inside a restaurant, we have an expectation on our part of the level of service we need mm -hmm. to provide. When you're out on the street, you're, it's that much further distance. The servers and support staff are coming and going and things, and we just felt like, and, and again, um, most days so far, we haven't needed the additional capacity. We're, we're able to service. It's, it's, it's not that we're not able to handle the volume inside the restaurant. It's that on the weekends, we are certainly very busy, but we are losing guests who are choosing to go other places just because they don't want to wait even half an hour or 40 minutes. So, uh, and, you know, we, we're pretty efficient at getting, once a guest is seated, we can get you served pretty quickly, um, but it is the uh, matter of just holding on to them for a little bit longer before they come in and sit down. And obviously, if they've been able to have a little bit of food, a drink, everybody's just Happy. a lot happier, yeah. <laughs> so this would, we could do the extension of premises for what time period? Uh, you could do it for, if they want to start May, you know, um, first, or obviously it'll be after the 6th, but, right. you know, going forward, if it would get approved till the end of September, whatever dates, kind of the board. Well, it know, is where the, the other, again, in our location uh, in Milwaukee, we will do we usually start it around Mother's Day weekend, and then we're done by, the, if we get the second week of October, we'll take it, but it usually it's done by then, okay. so. I mean, I, I'm, I know you'll do a great job with the, with the outdoor bar and how it, how it looks, mm -hmm. and I was just there this past week, and had a great omelet, so I mean. Great, <laughs> great. <laughs> no, you know, I'm, I, always, I, I, I'm I, not I here, Crying a sob story. The Shorewood has been incredibly welcoming to us, and, and uh, we it, last summer was a big challenge because of staffing. It was mm -hmm. the worst, and all four of our restaurants were affected, and every restaurant operator in the town. Mm -hmm. It's gotten better, and we've, we're, it's always about building a core team. And once you've got that team, you're good. What we did not anticipate about Shorewood is we expected more business traffic during the week. And it's not. just not there. Yeah. So we are putting a lot of energy now into some direct mail campaigns, and we've got a, a hospitality industry special on Tuesdays. We're doing direct mail. We're going after different businesses, all in an attempt to try and get people to come in during the week. If we could build up our week time business, uh, you know, it wouldn't be as concerned about the weekends. But where we're at on the weekends is we really need to capitalize on that right now. Sure. We've, we've been operationally profitable from week one. We're just not nearly at the capacity we thought we'd be. So, you know, that's that's my job. we got to build the business. All right, we're going just to 7.30, yeah. okay. so um, it'll be you, on the base. I'll be in touch, or Bart will be I in think touch, one of us. Um, I'll get started working on improving the depictions, okay. and I think you and I are scheduled to have a review. We are, anyway, yes. So that would be great. We'll yep. that time. Okay, thank, thank you, you all. You. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I'll move to adjourn. Second. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Too nervous. Yeah, too nervous. Oh, I always get that same.